Brother Dempsey, you care to bring me my water? 
like it should be in that pew right there. Praise the Lord. I, I, feel, I feel good this morning. You know, sometimes I, I just got to stop what I'm doing and, and thank God and give Him praise. You know, I was, sometimes I forget. I've been in church for 11 years now. Sometimes I forget who I was and what I was. And, and I'm glad I do forget because that man is dead now. But sometimes I make myself remember that I know what a wretch I was. That I may see how much he loved me. That while I was in my sins, Christ died for me. And while I was ungodly, he died for me. Praise the Lord. The more ungodly that you see yourself, the more amazing His grace becomes. That's why it's good sometimes to see sin in your life and you see God love you through that sin. Praise the Lord. And once you see that love, then it makes you move for Him in a way that you never moved for Him before. What is love? I don't know why I'm going here, but just for a minute, what is love? I asked myself this question yesterday as I was uh, out working at, at, at work. What is love? And to me, love is an action. Anybody can say they love you, but the person that really loves you will move for you. Praise the Lord. Love is an action. What else is love? Everything that's done in your life is of no profit unless it's done in love. Paul said if I had all knowledge and could understand all mysteries and have not love, it profits me nothing. He says if I have faith to move a mountain and have not love, it profits me nothing. I don't care how good you are, how much you give, how much you know, or how long you've been a member of this church. If you have not love, it's of no profit to you or to me or to God or anything. Hey, we are Christians. Born of God. The Bible says God is love, so we're born in love. Let us walk in that love that we may be a prophet to the church and the God of his kingdom. Everybody there? Rebecca was barren. Rebecca is Isaac's wife. She couldn't have children. So Isaac interceded and he prayed that she have children. Well, then she got pregnant. And she was having trouble with her pregnancy. She didn't know what was going on. And she went and prayed about it. And then the Lord let her know that she got twins. Chapter 25, verse 22. And the children struggled together within her. The children were fighting inside her womb. And she said, if it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of the Lord. And the Lord said unto her, two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy mouth. And the one people shall be stronger than the other, and the elder shall serve the younger. Right here, God is telling her that the younger shall be the greater. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. The first came out red, all over like a hairy garment, and they called his name Esau. And after that, his brother came out, and his hand took hold of Esau's heel, and his name was called Jacob, which also means heel over. And Isaac was three score years old when she buried them. Whenever Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, God gave a promise to Adam and Eve that the woman shall bring forth a seed. He said the seed of the woman shall crush the head of the serpent. Well, ever since God gave that promise that the seed of the woman is going to crush the head of the serpent, the head of the devil, the devil tried to flip that around. What did he do? He had Cain to kill Abel. He had Ishmael to persecute Isaac. He had Jacob, or Esau, to come against Jacob. And look, how did Esau, how was Jacob born? Holding Esau's heel. I want you to know Esau was of the flesh. The Bible says, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Because Esau was a man of the world. He was a worldly man, but Jacob was a plain man who sought after the spiritual things of God. And I want you to know that Satan has always tried to crush the head of God's anointing. It was prophesied in the book of Psalms about Judas Iscariot. And Jesus spoke through David and said, My friend that has eaten bread with me has lifted his heel up against me. Just like Esau was born with his heel at Jacob's head. Even so, Judas lifted up his heel against Jesus. Just like Cain came against Abel and Ishmael against Isaac. So that's the way they were born. And after the kids were grown, they said that Jacob saw a pottage. Pottage is soup with meat in it. And Esau came from the field and he was faint. And Esau said to Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage. For I am faint. Therefore, his name was called Edom. Edom means red. That's what his name was. When you read about the Edomites, 
You read about Esau's descendants. Jacob said, Sell me this day thy birthright. Now, birthright is a spiritual thing. It's the passing on of the name of the Father. And here's the thing, Abraham, the seed of the woman was promised back in the garden. And then it was given on down to Noah. It was given down through Shem. And it was given down through Abraham. And it's given down through Isaac, the promise of this kind of redeemer. And now, here, Isaac has got these two children that are twins. And the birthright is Esau. And Jacob says, sell me this day thy birthright. I want to be the one. Though I may not see it in my life, though it may not profit me none in this world, it may not get me a bigger house or more money, I want it. I want this spiritual thing of knowing that this Redeemer is coming through me. I want the birthright of Abraham and of Isaac. And Esau said, Behold, I'm at the point to die. And what profit shall this birthright do to me? And Jacob said, Swear me this day. And he swore unto him and sold his birthright unto Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage of windows. And what pottage of windows is? It's red liquid soup with red meat. He sold his birthright for red soup and red meat. And he did eat and drink and he rose and he went his way. And look what it says. And thus Esau despised his birthright. <coughs> now here's the thing. The Bible says the volume of the book is written with Jesus Christ. Can you see Jesus Christ? In this? Because he's in The volume of it speaks of him. What did Jesus come to do? You remember whenever Jesus came, he talked to Nicodemus. What did he say to Nicodemus? He said, Verily, verily, I said unto except that man be born again, he shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said, Well, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time to his mother's womb and be born? Jesus said, Marvel not that I said unto you that you must be born again. Don't try to figure it out, Nicodemus. That which is born after the flesh is flesh, but that which is born after the spirit is spirit. We was all born after the flesh when we was born, but Jesus says you must be born after the spirit. Why did Jesus come? You might say, die on the cross. Why? Did he die on the cross? He died on the cross to shed his blood. Why? To buy something to you. The Bible says that the church is purchased with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. The Bible says you are not your own that you may do what you want to do, but you are bought with a price, even with the blood of Jesus Christ. Peter says you're bought, you're redeemed. Redeemed means to buy something back. Peter says you're redeemed not with corruptible things, but with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And what did he do with that precious blood? He bought you a birthright. When you get born again, what happens to you, Brother Danny? When you get born again, you was dead spiritually. You was born in sin. And your spirit's dead to God as far as worship and praise and worthy to walk down the streets of gold. But when you got saved, the blood of Jesus Christ bought you back unto God. It cleansed you of sin. His spirit came inside you and was made one with you. And now the Bible says that you are born again. You have a birthright to be a citizen. Praise the Lord. What did Jacob do? With red soup and with red meat, he bought himself a birthright. How did Jesus buy your birthright? With your eyes of your heart, open them up a little bit. Sometimes you've got to close the eyes of this flesh that you may see. Hit Samson didn't see until they got his eyes out. How many of you know that? He was looking at the world. He was drinking the wine. He was running with strange women. And then they poked his eyes out. Then he saw clearly again how to serve God. Sometimes you've got to shut the eyes of the flesh that you may see. Praise the Lord. Sometimes we see best with our eyes wide shut. Praise the Lord. And what happened? He bought the birthright with red suit and red meat. Look with the eyes of your heart back to the cross. The Bible says that his vision, Jesus Christ's vision, his appearance was marred worse than any man. The worst beat you've ever seen, the worst you ever seen anybody maimed or beat in a car crash or whatever, he was beat worse. You could not recognize him. His own mother could not recognize his facial appearance. He was beat beyond recognition. Why? That you might be recognized as holy. Why? Now, picture him with the eyes of your heart. Lifted up between the heaven and the earth. Blood, his, his hair full of blood, his face full of blood, that crown of thorns on his hands. Pierced and blood running down his arm. The Bible says that his bones were exposed. He says, I may look and tell all my bones where they stare at me. Let's see his meat hanging and the bones exposed. And he says, all my bones come out of joint. Both shoulders, both hips. It's all out of joint. His meat's a dangling. Blood's everywhere. Why? He 
buy you a birthright. Amen. Ooh, praise the Lord and praise God. That you may be able to praise God. Hallelujah. He bought you a birthright. That's why you must be born again. And that's how you're born again. You're born again by the blood of Christ. Cleansing your soul. He buys you back unto God. He takes your dead spirit. It's alive. It's just not alive to God because it's alive to sin. He takes your dead spirit and he borns it again by his blood. He buys you back to God and makes you new again. He says, uh, Behold, I make all things new. You are new again. You receive Christ and you are. Let me show you how foolish the world is. You can see so much of the world in Esau. Esau was a man of the world. It came to pass that when Isaac was old, I mean chapter 27. If you want to turn there and get on the Bible. After you get this story, it'd be really good if you read all of Genesis 25 and all of Genesis 27 just to fill in the blanks for yourself, but it's too long for me to do it all. But I give you a lot of meat of it, and you can study the rest of it after that if you wish. Verse 1, it says, It came to pass when Isaac was old, Isaac is uh, Jacob and Esau's father. And his eyes were dim, so he could not see. He was blind, he couldn't see. And Esau called, and he called Esau his little son and said unto him, My son, and he said, Behold, you're mine. He tells him, he says, I'm about to die. He thought he was going to die. He ended up living like 80 more years. But he thought he was going to die because he was 100 years old. But anyway, he said, I'm about to die, and I'm going to give a blessing before I die. And Esau goes out and tries to earn this blessing. I don't know if Jacob, if Isaac knew that he sold his birthright or not, but the blessing goes to those who have the birthright. If you don't know how the Jews work, the eldest son, he gets the blessing. Let's just say I have four acres of land and I have three children. The eldest gets the blessing. He gets a double portion. He gets two parts. The other ones get one part. Okay? That's the way it works. Well, Esau sold his birthright. It ain't his no more. And then now Jacob's, uh, Isaac's about to hand out the blessing, and he's going, after despising his birthright, he's going, after giving it away, and knowing that it's Jacob's, he's going to try to get the blessing without the birthright. You want to know what's that? There's so many people doing that same thing. So many people in America, they think they're good people. They're despising the blood of Christ. They're despising the new birth he's trying to give them, and yet they want to stand before God and get all the blessings. It's not going to happen. Just like Esau went out and tried to work to earn the blessings of his father, despising the birthright. Even so, everybody that wants the blessings of God and despises the blood of the cross and be born again, it ain't going to happen. Verses 9 through 12. Jacob's mother finds out about this. She tells Jacob, said, Go find me two kids of the goats. And make savory meat for thy father, such as he loved. And thou shalt bring it to thy father that he may eat and that he may bless thee before his death. If you don't know much about the two goats, there, there's, there's a rule with the goats. The goats is always used for a sin offering. And every year on the day of the they took two goats. And they took the blood of the goats and they sprinkled it seven times upon the veil and seven times upon the mercy seat where you represent Jesus Christ shed his blood seven different ways for you to forgive you. And then they took the other goat which is called the scapegoat and they laid their hands up on it and they confessed all the sins of the nation and then that goat bore the iniquity that the people may go free. That's the law of the two goats. Jesus Christ is the goat that shed his blood for you. He is your scapegoat. He bore your iniquity that you may go free. He is your scapegoat. Well, I want you to know the Bible says we're clothed with Christ. What happens here? He goes and gets the two goats, and his mother goes and fixes it. And Jacob says to his mother, Behold, Esau, my brother, is a hairy man, and I'm a smooth man. My father, peradventure, will fill me, and he shall, and I shall sing to him unto the and I shall bring a curse upon me, and not a blessing. And the mother goes on, I, I ain't going to read it all because it's like 50 verses long. But his mother goes on, he takes the skins of the two goats and he clothes Jacob with the goats. Okay, I want you to know Jesus Christ is your sin offering. But I want you to know when you stand before God, you're not going to stand before God with who you are in His flesh. I'm not going to stand before God as Shane Ward who lied, who done drugs, or who uh, cheated or done whatever. I'm going to stand before God clothed in Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. The Bible says we are to put on Christ. Just like I put on my 
jacket, I am to put on Christ. The Bible says that the Lamb is given for our clothing. And when John saw him baptized, and he said, Behold the Lamb of God, which takes away the sin of the world. When I stand before God, the Bible says that the church is the body of Christ. When I stand before God, I'm going to stand before God as the body of Christ. Praise the Lord. And we all be together there. And we all share His throne. So Jacob takes and is clothed with the goat. He's clothed with the sin offering. Verses 13 through 18. I'll just read it to you. Rebecca took the goodly raiment of her eldest son Esau, which was with her in the house, put it up on Jacob, her son, and put the skins of the kids of the goats upon his hands and upon the smooth of his neck. Gave him the savory meat and the bread, and she prepared it into the hands of her son Jacob. And he came unto his father and said, My father, here I am. And he said, Who art thou, my son? Jacob said to his father, I am Esau, thy firstborn. I have done according to thou badest me. Arise, I pray thee, set me my venison, that thy soul may bless me. And Isaac said unto his son, how is, it, how is it that you found it so quickly, my son? And he said, Because the Lord has brought it to me. And Isaac said unto Jacob, Come near, I pray thee, that I may feel thee, my son, whether thou art my very son Esau or not. Isaac's starting to think there's well, some little fishes going on here. Are you, are you really Esau? He can't see. He's blind. How does a blind man see? He sees with his hands. They, they feel you. He says, come here let me feel you. Let me make sure you're Esau. That's what he says. Come here let me, let me feel you that I may know whether you are my very son Esau or not. And Jacob went near to Isaac, his father. He fell on him. He said, the voice is Jacob's voice. He said, but the hands are the hands of Esau. He says, you sound like Jacob. He says, but you look like Esau. What's going on? How does this represent Jesus Christ? When Jesus Christ was hanging on a cross between the heaven and the earth, I want you to know the worst sinner God ever saw, he saw Jesus Christ on the cross because he saw Jesus Christ clothed with you. He saw Danny's lies on Jesus. He saw my robbery, my stealing upon Jesus. He saw Brother Dempsey's blaspheming upon Jesus. He saw it all on Jesus. And whenever Jesus cried out, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Whenever Jesus is speaking, no doubt God is saying, He sounds like the voice of my son, but He looks like shame. He looks like Dempsey. He looks like that. Praise the Lord. That's what happened. He says, You sound like Jacob, but you look like Esau. Jesus looked like us. The Bible says, For he who knew no sin was made sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. He sounds like Jesus, his speech was perfect, but he looked like this. Therefore, the Bible says it pleased the Lord to bruise him. Why did it please God to bruise him? Because he saw my sin. My sin has to be punished. I cannot stand before God if I, with my sin being unpunished. So Jesus came and he looked like me. He was made sin. He looked like me, sin, and was punished that I might be made the righteousness of God, that I may stand before God as the body of Christ and look like him. Praise the Lord. He stood in your stead at the cross that when you get to heaven, you can stand in His. Jesus said, I have overcome and am set down with my Father in His throne, but He that overcometh, I shall bring to sit with me in my throne. Jesus now sits in the Father's throne and He lets us sit. <coughs> Did you know that the church gets to sit in the throne of Christ? <coughs> That's in Revelation chapter 3. He discerned Him not and He blessed Him. And after he blessed him, Jacob went out. And then Esau comes in. Think of the nerve of Esau. He don't have the birthright. He despised the birthright. He sold the birthright. He didn't want it. It's of no profit to him. But yet he wants all the blessings of the Father without the birthright. There's so many people in the land today doing the exact same thing. They don't want the cross. They don't want the church. They don't want the blood. But they want all the blessings of God. You think these men has got 20 or 30 million dollars that they, they lay awake at night trying to figure out how to get more. They want all the blessings of this world. And you know what? You talk to them about Jesus. Why are you a Christian? But I'm a good person. God will send somebody like me to hell. They want all the blessings when they leave too. You can't despise the birthright and get all the blessings of God. 
So as Jacob leaves, here comes Esau. And Isaac said unto him, Who art thou? You know, they all kind of people that think that they know God. And when they stand before him, he's going to, they're going to hear them words. Who are you? He said, Many shall come and say, We have preached in thy name. We prophesied in thy name. We built buildings in thy name. And he's going to say, Who art thou that worked over me? But I never knew you. Who are you? That's what he said. He said, I am Esau, your son. Isaac trembled very exceedingly said, Who? Where is he that had taken the venison and brought it me? I have eaten all before thou canest and have blessed him, and he shall be blessed. He said, I can't unbless him. He's never got the blessing. I want you to know if you're saved today, you can't be unblessed. You haven't got the blessing. You can't be unsaved. You've already got the salvation. You can't lose heaven. You can only gain. <clears throat> Hallelujah. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2, you've already been made a citizen in heaven. In Ephesians chapter 2, it says you've already got a seat in heaven. And you can't unlose it because you've already been blessed. When you come to the cross of Christ as a sinner that you are, He said, Lord, forgive me. Have mercy upon me, a sinner. And you receive Christ in your heart. You've got a blessing and you can't be unblessed. Praise the Lord. That's some good news. No matter what happens, no matter what goes on, no matter how long Satan and all the demons of hell come against you, you cannot be unblessed once you've been blessed by God. Praise the Lord. Once you've got Christ in your heart, He's there. Whenever the lamb was slain in Egypt, Moses told him to take the lamb inside the house and never let it leave again. Your body's the house. When the slain lamb, Jesus Christ, came in your heart, he comes into your house never to leave. Praise the Lord. And look here, verse 34. And when Esau heard the words of his father, he cried with a great and exceeding bitter cry. And said to his father, Bless me, even me also, O my father. If you keep reading, Isaac gives him a blessing that's earthly, not spiritual. Jacob had been born. All men are sin shall be forgiven, except the blasphemy of the Holy Ghost. Let me show you what God showed you. Hebrews chapter 12, if you want to turn that. Hebrews 12, chapter, verse 16. We read verse 15 just to get a better context. Paul here, when he's right, he says, looking diligently. <clears throat> to look diligently means look till it hurts. Diligent means to do something until it hurts, to do it painstakingly. Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God. Lest any root of bitterness spring up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. For you know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing. It was Esau's blessing if he would disown him at the birth For you know that afterward he would inherit the blessing but was rejected. Let me ask you a question. Where in the Bible can you find somebody repeating and not getting no repentance? Look what this says. For you know how afterward when he would inherit the blessing he was rejected for he found no place of repentance though he saw it carefully. Where else do you read about somebody seeking repentance carefully with tears and not get it? This is the only place in the Bible that I know that it said a man sought repentance carefully with tears and there was no repentance found for him. Why was there no repentance found for him? Because he despised the birthright. I want you to know there are going to be millions of people that stand before the throne of God and they're going to seek repentance with tears. Lord, I'm sorry. Forgive me. And though they seek it carefully with tears, there will be no repentance found for them. Because they despise the Lord. That's what blaspheming the Holy Ghost is. <clears throat> Jesus came and shed his blood for you. And the Holy Spirit, Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock, he knocks on your heart's door. And he knocks with them pierced hands. And he knocks with them pierced feet. And that, <laughs> that brow that was pierced with them thorns. He knocks on your heart and he says, Let me in. That I may cleanse you. And you may not open your mouth and say a word. But if you don't
don't come. If you don't let him in your heart, you might as well just say no. When somebody knocks on your door, you say come in or you don't say nothing. That thing is saying go away. Right? Well, he says I knock on your door. Maybe he's knocking on your door. I don't know. But if you don't come, then there's no repentance for you. And there's no forgiveness for you in this world, nor the world to come. Why do you blaspheme God and blaspheme, blaspheme means speak against? Why is it you can speak against the Father and the Son and not the Holy Spirit? Because when the Holy Spirit knocks on your heart's door and you tell him no, you can't do it. You're shutting the door and locking it on the only thing that can save you. If the Holy Spirit don't come into your heart, how do you expect to be forgiven in this world? How do you expect to be forgiven in the world to come? You can't be forgiven in this world or the world to come if you shut the door and lock it when the Holy Ghost tries to come in. If you don't receive the blood of Jesus Christ and are born again, then there's no forgiveness for you in this world. You will die in your sins. And when you stand before God, there's no forgiveness for you in that world. And that's what blasphemy the Holy Ghost is. It's simply rejection rejecting the salvation of Jesus Christ. It's rejecting the cross of Christ. It's rejecting the blood of Christ. And He loved you enough to leave heaven's glory and die for you when you didn't deserve it. The Bible said He died for you when you was ungodly. Trying to save you. And if you reject it and spit in His face, then there's no forgiveness for you in this world or the world to come. And it's your own fault. Because He tried to save you. He left heaven and should ever drop the blood in His body to have born you again. And give you and make you a citizen of heaven. To give you heaven's glory. To give you throne and a crown and an everlasting joy and peace. He's trying to give you through the cross. But if you despise the birthright, will you let him buy you the birthright? Jacob bought his birthright. How? With the red liquid soup and the red meat. Look through the cross with the eyes of your heart and see that red liquid flow from his body. See his meat dangle. That's him buying you a Will you let him fight for you? Praise the Lord. Because that's the only way you're going to be a citizen of heaven. That's the only way you're going to be worthy to be forgiven in this world and the world to come. You can look at it this way. If you reject the cross, you're unforgiven in this world and the world to come. But if you receive the cross, you're already forgiven in this world and you're already forgiven in the world to come. You don't got to wait. If you've got the Christ in your heart, you've already got it. Praise the Lord. The devil aggravated me for years with this without blaspheming the Holy Ghost. I want you to know only the lost can blaspheme the Holy Ghost. Only the lost can say, no, I don't want it. The saved already has it. Only the lost can shut the doors to it because the saved is already inside their door. That's how you got saved. Praise the Lord. That's the message for today. I mean, I, I could go on, but I feel like God's touched hearts. And uh, study it up for yourself. Don't just take my word for it. I showed you enough scripture that I believe that you know I go to drive. This is how God revealed to me what blasphemy and holy ghost was. And it's blessed me ever since then. I've no longer let the devil attack me with you blaspheming the holy ghost. I know I have. But I know I received the blood. I know I've got that spirit. I know that he is mine. And I am. Do you know that today? Do you know that you're a child of the living God? If He's in your heart, you know. If He's in your heart, you've got a birthright. Hallelujah, you've been born again. You are a citizen of heaven's glory. Can you imagine going to New York City and when you got there, the mayor said, this is your city. And you can go anywhere and do anything you want. But it's a city 1,500 miles long. 1,500 miles wide, 1,500 miles high, that is pure gold. It's got a wall that goes all the way around it that's solid jasper. It's got 12 gates, and all 12 gates are of one pearl. And when you get there, they're going to say, this is yours. Praise the Lord. Why? Because you've got the Lord. Because you already have been made a citizen. He said, I give you a white stone and a new name. You know when Rome conquered something? The men that actually fall in the battle, once the battle was over and the city was won, they got a white stone. And for the rest of their life, they could go to that city and everything was free. 
The gym was free. The hotel was free. The restaurants were free because they had a white stone with their name in it that I conquered this city. When you get to heaven, you get a white stone in the new name. Everything is yours. Everything's free to you. Why? Because he bought your birth. Praise the Lord. And your new name will be the name of Christ. Because you are the body of Christ. <coughs> That's the message, Brother Danny. This message has touched your heart, and I imagine it has, because it's God's word, not mine. If it's touched your heart, and you want to know that you have this birthright, you want to know that heaven's going to be your home, you want to know for sure, because this life is so soon over. And he's touching your heart, come. As the church stands. It was 275. I